the dressing room. Toka was sitting alone on the bench, the laptop in front of her. Toko, did you decide to come hear what Alter Ego has too? I already heard it. With Master. With Master! You don't have to keep saying it. Anyway, so what are you doing right now? Shut up. Stop bothering me. Get out of the way. We have to talk to Alter Ego. No. I made Master a promise. A promise? Master told me to wait here, so that's what I'm d doing. What are you, his dog? If it's what Master wants, I'd do anything he asks. You just love being mistreated. Well, fine. If you really want me gone, by all means. Achoo! Hey guys, what's going on? Um, we'd like you to move. Sure thing! Just kneel before me and beg! First a mega masochist, now a super sadist? Um, Toko? Seriously. I'm asking you nicely to let us use the laptop. Hmm? <laughs> Didn't you hear what I said? I told you to kneel and beg! Come on, Makoto. Give her the old one-two combo. One, drop to your knees. Two, beseech! Why are you acting like you're not part of this? I was as desperate as I felt. Finally, I did kneel down in front of her, and I said, Please, I'm begging you. Will you please let us use the laptop? <laughs> Such an ultra miraculous feeling of happiness! All my pent up anger at Master for abusing me is evaporating! So even you realize it's abuse. That should be enough, right? Hurry up and let us talk to Alter Ego. Just what I thought. Finally, the time has come. <sighs> I'm starting to get kind of nervous. I felt the same way. Resting on the keyboard, my hands had started to shake. 
Move. The single word was like a sharpened blade. Wounded, I moved to let her take over. Here we go. Kyoko began typing, the words appearing as fast as I could read them. Can you tell us what you found out? Sure. I analyzed the files and extracted all the useful information I could find. And one particularly important fact I discovered was that a certain plan had been put into effect here. To isolate the students of Hope's Peak Academy and create a communal life for them. That was the stated goal of the plan. But it was meant to be more than just a normal school life. The students were intended to live out the rest of their lives here. That's... It's exactly the situation we found ourselves in. It's quite unthinkable, isn't it? And what's more, the one who came up with the plan was... None other than the administrators of Hope Speak themselves. What? Wait, hold on. Then the reason we've been imprisoned here? It wasn't the work of some psycho freak or criminal organization or whatever. It was... the school itself? That doesn't make any sense! Why would they do that? I don't think Alter Ego is finished. Perhaps we should hear the rest. It seems that the reason they devised this plan was because of what happened one year ago. This is how they described that event. They said it was the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. What does that mean? Yeah, what kind of name is that for something? Otherwise known as the tragedy, it was apparently some sort of devastating occurrence. Because of the tragedy, Hope's Peak Academy was forced to discontinue its wall as a school and close down. I see. Things are finally starting to make sense. What this means is, one year ago, this thing, this tragedy, took place. And whatever it was, it forced Hope's Peak to shut down. From there, they decided to use the school as a kind of staging ground. They planned to sequester the students here, where they would live out the rest of their lives. But why would the Hope's Peak administrators want to shut everyone in like that? And what could this tragic event have possibly been? In a flash, Kyoko had typed their questions into the computer. And the answer we got was... Sorry, I don't know if that information was ever on this computer, it's gone now. I'm totally useless. I'm sorry. And that's all they said. Then, is this really the end? We get halfway through the answer, and that's it? They would appear so... disappointing. Oh, wait! There's one other thing I forgot to mention. I think it might be important. I believe it has to do with the Mastermind. The Mastermind? Kyoko's fingers moved even faster than they had so far. Did you figure out the Mastermind's identity? That's gotta be the mastermind. I mean, Monokuma's been calling himself the headmaster, right? Which makes the real headmaster that much more suspicious. But if we break down the door to his room, 
We're dead, right? So what are we supposed to do? I'll find a way. Huh? No matter what it takes, I will find the Headmaster. No matter what the cost. Kyoko? What's going on? I can't explain why. I just know that I have to find him. She has to? Kyoko, what's going on with you? When she heard about the Headmaster, her reaction was almost violent. We, we should see if Alter Ego has any more information. That seemed to be an attempt to regain her composure, and she started typing again. Did you learn anything else? I'm sorry. That's everything I found. All the information on this laptop seems to be pretty old, so that's all I can do from here. I'm really sorry. Then... it really is all over. Wait, Alter Ego seems to have more to say. Um, well, it's kind of a different topic, but I was wondering about something. I haven't seen Celeste, Hifumi, or Taka since yesterday. A heavy silence fell across the room. The only sound was the flat, precise clicking of keys as Kyoko typed. They're all dead. What? I see. Certainly I knew that was a possibility, but... It... really happened. Oh, sorry. There's no point in me getting depressed over things I can't do anything about. Well then, I guess that's it. That's it. A simple phrase that held so much meaning. She began typing again. You've done your job. Thank you. I'm done? I guess I am. Huh. Then, maybe I'll take a little rest. I'm kind of tired. Goodbye, everyone. See you later. With that, the laptop entered sleep mode. So Alto Eagle did everything he could. We won't have to talk to him all that much anymore. But I kind of feel sorry for him. You feel sorry? But he's just a computer program, right? I know, but still. He did everything he could for us, you know? I mean, yeah, it did, but that's what a computer program is designed to do. You don't tell a computer, good job, every time you shut it down, do ya? Well, no, but when we talked to Alter Ego, I guess I just didn't see it that way. I know what you mean. I feel the same way. Hey, come on. It's just a program. You can tell the difference between a program and a friend, right? But you know, what's the difference between us and that program, really? Huh? I started thinking about how you would differentiate a person and an AI. Alter Ego isn't human. I know that. It's just a program running on a computer. But at the same time, I couldn't help but think of him as our friend. Yeah, he's no different from us. He's still our friend. I think... maybe I understand where you're coming from. Then there's no problem calling him a friend. After all, the more friends the merrier, right? Check this out. Friendship has no survival value. It gives value to survival. So anyway... Don't so anyway that... It's a totally smart and cool thing that I quoted from... I don't remember where. Anyway, there's nothing more Alter Ego can do to help us. As such, his role in this is over. Am I wrong about that? No, but... And frankly, I question the ease with which you decide who is and who isn't your friend. Do you really mean that? The story's gotten off track. 
we should go over what Alter Eagle said one more time. Yeah, good idea. What was Hope's Peak staff thinking? Why are they making us kill each other? Alter Eagle said that what happened one year ago is what started everything. Yeah, he said it was the biggest, most awful, most hopeless event in human history, right? It must have been a huge incident, whatever it was. But did something like that really happen a year ago? I don't remember anything happening that you could describe that way. What about you guys? I don't really watch the news, so... Sorry, nothing comes to mind. That event led to the closing of Hope's Peak. If nothing else, it must have had some kind of connection to this school. Maybe all the students here were killed or something! That kind of catastrophe would have been all over the news. At least one of us will remember that. Then, maybe they covered it up. That would explain why none of us knew that the school had been shut down. Totally covering up something like that. I suppose it's not totally impossible. What's wrong with our government? Our taxes pay their salaries. They should be handling stuff like that. Maybe, but right now there's only one path open to us. We have to find the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy. We have to find him and make him tell us everything. As long as we get our hands on him, I think... Kyoko? When she said headmaster, I got that feeling again. But even that is a problem not so easily solved. Yeah, you're right. Well, our business is done here, so for now we should get out of here. Oh yeah, good idea. Then I... Achoo! Huh? Is it really that dusty? Wait, I mean... Oh no! I'm not waiting anymore! I'm not guarding it. Yaki is gonna be so mad at me. Let's avoid getting involved any further. Good call. But as we left the dressing room, someone was there waiting for us. My heart is pound, pound, pounding away! It's pounding with anger! You're... you're not still mad about the whole breaking into the headmaster's room thing, are you? Oh, that little matter doesn't matter even a little. And I'm a little jealous of you guys enjoying an incident mixed bath, but that doesn't matter either. It's building. I feel it building. My head's about to boil over with rage. Don't get so angry. Here, let me help center your chakra. Etch this on the walls of your brain, okay? When you do something to me, I do it right back. An eye for an eye, a fang for a fang. Fang for a fang. Be careful! He just chanted the incantation of devastation! No. It's just a saying. Oh, I see. But what's he talking about? So, it's night time. What does everyone want to do? Celeste was the one who suggested our nighttime rule, but she's gone now. I 
think we should still avoid being out at night time. I know it'll make me feel better that way. I agree. Very well then. In that case, time for bed. So everyone headed back to their rooms. Monokuma's parting words left me feeling anxious the rest of the night. Once I was back in my room, I got lost in thought. What we'd learned from Alter Ego kept on spinning around and around in my mind. The administrators of Hope's Peak had planned all of this? They did it because of the tragedy which had happened a year before? And apparently the headmaster is the one behind it all. The mastermind. All these mysteries make me worried. But I still have to try and unravel them, bit by bit. I'm sure the road will be long and tough, but I don't have any other choice. First things first, I need to head to the dining hall. As I entered the dining hall, the first thing I saw was her. What are you staring at? Oh, Toko? What? You think your eyes will rot just by looking at me? Fine. Then don't look at me. I think he's just surprised to see you at the breakfast meeting, is all. Indeed. It's been quite a while since you joined us. Yeah, what made you change your mind? Biakia said he... Likes girls to have some meat on her bones, so I'm gonna start eating. I'm gonna force it down into my stomach. I'm gonna eat till I drop. I refuse to lose. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Well, other than that, it looks like Kyoko isn't here. No, oh, she said she'd come by later. Later? Yeah. After you leave. She's not even trying to hide it anymore. I know I said she wanted you to show some backbone, but you didn't need to show her that much. You're dirty, Makoto. Dirty! President Dirty of Dirtlandia. You don't understand. You're the type who takes the stairs of love three steps at a time, aren't you? I'm telling you. It's not like that. Just shut up already, Hina. You've been running your filthy mouth like that all morning. Filthy? Me? Don't make me repeat myself. I'm not filthy. It's no use denying it. We can all see how disgusting you are. Shut up. You and that lusty body of yours. Night after night, you go out for your illicit club meetings. Hey, knock it off. I can't deal with dirty stuff like that. Your midnight extracurricular activities only put us in even more danger. Stop it. You'd like me to stop, wouldn't you? Your sweaty hands gripping the big, fat chalk tight, going for all the extra credit. Your screams are like the screech of a violated blackboard. And, and, ah, uh, it's amazing. Indecent ideas are coming to me one after another. 
So, would you rather have your black eye on your left or the right? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry! Let's leave Toko alone. She's gone a little funny from all her pent-up frustration. Anyway, you and Kyoko need to make up already, you know? Yeah, I know. I mean, of course I want things to get better as soon as possible. But with everything that's been going on, I haven't had a chance to talk to her about what I saw. Before anything, I need to talk to Sakura about it. Uh, um, Sakura? What is it? Can you make some time later? I was hoping I could talk to you. Ah, now that Kyoko's dumped him, Makoto's trying to win Sakura's heart. Are you in heat, Makoto? Don't care who they are, as long as they've got the right equipment. Watch out, Sakura. Makoto's transformed into a wild beast. Prime Minister Wild Beast of Bistopia. Why is this happening to me? Can our talk wait till tomorrow? I'd like to get some rest today. For some reason, I've been feeling worn down these last few days. Huh? Are you sick? Did you get hurt? No, nothing serious. I've just had some minor aches and pains. Huh? Is that... It must be because of that battle. But it must be pretty bad if you have to go rest. Are you sure you're okay? I'm sure a protein shake and some sleep will get me back on my feet. That's true. Protein is good for all kinds of stuff. You guys, like, worship protein. It's like your god or something. Makoto, I don't know what it is you want to talk to Sakura about, but save it till tomorrow. She's in pain. Yeah, I got it. Sorry. Well, for now, let's eat. Eat? I'm kind of nervous. Huh? How come? Because I don't usually eat in front of other people. Ever since I was a kid, I'd eat b by myself. What about your family? Oh... Well, yeah. I used to live with my dad, my mom, and my mom. You had two moms? What? That's just how things were. That's like a serious issue. Just let it go. You're asking for trouble getting involved with her more than you have to. How dare you speak to me with that d disgusting mouth of yours? Stop saying stuff like that! Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and eat. If I don't, Kyoko will never show up. Pretty miserable situation, man. <laughs> I scarfed down breakfast as fast as I could, and immediately headed back to my room. I'll have to wait till tomorrow to confront Sakura about what I saw. But in a way, I'm kind of relieved. It takes a lot of courage to stand face to face with Sakura and accuse her of something. Attention, attention! Please gather in the gym as soon as you possibly can. Quickly, 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 quickly! He made a special announcement. To ask us to come to the gym. And he sounded pretty serious about it too. Need. 
遺跡を閉じて個性を磨け結界悩むなんだよまた一つ消去頭から結末それが我がエンタメイラ Now, wasn't that just a despairing d e c e n t video? <laughs> If you like our content, be sure to drop a subscribe and click on the bell so you get notified when our next video comes out. If you want to watch even more despair, you can click on any of the videos beside me. I'll see you later. <laughs>